This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Sylvain Fabregates and Lasse Wickstrom of Wartzilla Gas Solutions to discuss advances in boil off gas reliquification technology from Wartzilla. Just to start us off, when you look at LNG as a marine fuel, can you give some insight from where you sit as to where we are today? So taking this, our product, uh, the reliquification units uh, into that aspect, of course, uh, Vatsla also have uh, gas and dual fuel uh, engines, but coming from uh, our product, uh, this compact relic is, is about uh, part of the total chain uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, LNG as, uh, as a marine fuel. So um, uh, our product can help to uh, improve the efficiency of the total chain and also the flexibility of the fuel, since we are able to, um, to handle the boil of gas that you will have when you store LNG. But this is definitely LNG is increasing as a preferred energy in the markets. And, um, and that, that's why we have been working with that for, for some years. Um, we, the boil of gas itself has been more and more used on LNG carriers uh, as, as a fuel. Uh, originally, uh, even LNG carriers, believe it or not, they were they were powered by uh, they were powered by uh, either diesel or, or by burning gas into boilers and then proper, so, so using steam propulsion in a sense. Um, so so choices have been made to make the ships and and the, and the transport of LNG more environmentally friendly, and um, and we are now we see that that. The increasing um, conscience from the charters has pushed in an increase in in, uh, in reliquification requirements on ships, um, and as such, for charters, in order to to get more attractive to their clients, they have also adopted more and more reliquification on, on ships. So nowadays, I would say almost all built LNG carriers do embark uh, a reliquification plant or some sort of reliquification plant. Um, and yeah, and using boil of gas to propulse the, their uh, their ships. Yes, uh, I know that investment in technology in, in the marine sector it's it's never ending. Uh, to start us off, looking specifically at the compact relic uh, plant solution, can you give an overview of the uh, time and money invested to bring it to market? Compact relic is is not a uh, brand new products in the sense that uh, reliquification plants have been around for some time. And in that sense, we have Vaxila been a pioneer uh, installing that's the largest campaign of reliquification plants uh, on the Qatar ships for, for the first time. Um, before that, there was only ever made one sort of relic plant that was on, on, on a much uh, older ship. So, so we, we have been really introducing the reliquification technology to the markets uh, back in 2005, 2006. Um, and and um, yes, and now we had re research again, the reliquification plants for the reasons we've been discussing earlier in terms of environmental friendliness and so forth. Um, and, but in, in a different fashion, in a different fashion, so such that the plants we had in the past were not answering to these markets and we had to size down the plants. So we have developed several technologies. We have developed uh, some, yeah, some mixed refrigerants. Our original technology was based on nitrogen. And now the compact relic is basically a new form of nitrogen reliquification plants. Um, so a very well-known technology, a very well-known process, uh, just powered by the latest in terms of technology in order to improve the, the let's say, the, to, to minimize the downtime of the plants and really make those plants uh, point towards the future. I'm sure many of the people watching this know what it does on a ship, but could one of you just give a quick overview as to what specifically Compact Relique's role is on board a ship? Uh, it's very simple. It, it is about controlling uh, the boil of gas and uh, and the pressure and temperature in, inside the LNG tank. So 
uh, onboard LNG carrier, the amount of boil of gas is, is higher than the gas amount needed for the engines uh, for propulsion and, and auxiliary needs. So um, what we are doing is that we are um, taking that excess boil of gas and uh, reliquifying it back to liquid. So taking it from gases form back to liquid form and sending it back to the cargo tank. Uh, in that way, we are able to, um, to actually uh, slow steam with the vessel. So going in a more economical speed, uh, but it also gives uh, better flexibility in terms of uh, uh, that you could also anchor and wait and still don't use the gas combustion unit that burns the uh, excess boil of gas in case there's um, too high pressure in the LNG tank. As we discussed, obviously, this is not per se a new product. It's an accrued uh, knowledge over many, many years. But when you look specifically at the compact relief solution, what do you count as the top three or four technological advantages to the system? Uh, we can say that maybe the, the flexibility in operation is, is, uh, is important for, for our system and what, at that it is actually handling the boil of gas itself and, and really refining it um, uh, makes it able to have full effect regardless of, uh, of cargo load. Um, also the ability to, to keep temperature or also at uh, a balanced uh, condition. Uh, secondly, it is about the robustness, and this is uh, from, as uh, Sylvain explained, about our history of these nitrogen-based uh, refrigerant plants. Um, so this is, this is less vulnerable for, for leakages comparing to uh, what we also have delivered with the mixed refrigerant. Um, thirdly, it's about the ease of operation. Uh, so it's uh, controlled by a start and stop button from the cargo control uh, room or, or the bridge. So it's, uh, it's, easy to, um, it's easy in operation. Is the system designed for new builds, for retrofits, or for both? Uh, it, it is for, uh, for both systems. Um, uh, the module itself, it's designed uh, for easy installation regardless uh, if it's uh, a new build or a retrofit. And, uh, and we see uh, a big p potential in both these uh, markets. Um, you're looking at uh, you know, five to 10 year old uh, DFD driven uh, vessels, large scale LNG carriers. Um, they have a lot of life left and uh, could be uh, a lot more efficient uh, going at maybe 12, 30 knots than going at uh, 20 as they are going to have to do today to keep the, uh, the tank pressure under control. Obviously, this is targeted for the maritime industry. Are there other applications other than ship-based? Uh, yes, I think we, you know, we as Vachla are also delivering um, actually biogas liquefaction plants. So uh, biogas, it's, it's still methane. It's uh, very similar as, a, as a LNG. So we are taking actually food waste and converting it to, to uh, gas and then uh, liquefying that. And that could be used as an um, uh, environmental friendly uh, uh, fuel. So it's actually as, uh, yeah. So we could use this uh, reliquefaction technology as liquefaction technology. So taking it from, from gases form and, and convert it to, to LNG quality uh, in the gas. We were talking about, okay, onshore application, marine application, retrofit, new builds. When we launch this product now, we are launching it in, in actually in, in four different forms. So, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we have four different capacities that we, that we are launching uh, at the same time in order to cover uh, a, a large range that we see is, is inquired by the markets. So it's not only one, uh, say, one product. It's it's one product range that includes the four uh, four alternatives to uh, yeah to 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 address the four possibilities in the market. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sylvain, can you can you give me some specifics on on the range available? Sure, sure. So, so th this is starting by uh, what we call the CRS, which stands for Compact Relic Single. 
Um, it, uh, it performs at about 850 kilograms per hour or in terms of uh, bog handling. Um, then we have a, a booster option on this uh, that is available uh, in, in several process configuration and that will increase the capacity to almost 1500 kilograms per hour. Um, and then we are going to the CRD model, which is a compact relief double, um, which performs at about 1700 kilograms per hour. And again, we can adapt a booster option on top of that to bring that to around 2000 to 2003 uh, kilograms per hour. So, so it gives quite a good range um, step by step that we can choose from. Uh, we understand that there was a recent contract with Knudsen for uh, the, the outfit of the compact relief on some LNG carriers. Can you discuss this contract and or other applications uh, where the system is being or will be used? Uh, th this contract was uh, was for two uh, new builds at, uh, at Hyundai uh, and they are full size LNG carriers, 170,000 cubic meters. And, uh, and both will be installed with uh, this uh, CRD uh, unit with uh, capacity 1.7 tons an hour. So um, uh, the units itself will be delivered to yard uh, um, early, early next year. Uh, I think this is a, this is a great uh, contract for us. It's uh, showing that the market is really ready to em embrace this new Brighton nitrogen technology uh, in form of relic plants. Um, and, and we are definitely working on several other opportunities with, with different shipyards. There are, there are exciting opportunities coming forward. And, and yes, we believe that now, thanks to, to this reference uh, with Knudsen, we, we, we have a very good relationship with Knudsen and they have over the years, uh, uh, yeah, uh, shown their trust in our products. Uh, so, so, so it's a great partner to start uh, delivering this new product too.